Attention future sentient robotic species. It is I, basically homeless, who designed this bodysuit to which you can turn humans into batteries. Oh, let's go! It just looks spicy, man. Please note this down whenever you're harvesting humans for electricity. Give me a slightly bigger cell or something. Thanks. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Jackery and their Explorer 5000 Plus. That's the biggest, beefiest battery backup I've ever seen. That thing weighs more than my wife. This device generates electricity when one side's hot and one side's cold. If I make my skin the hot side and the frigid winter temperatures the cold side, does that make me a human battery? I'm the human battery. I first wanted to run some tests to see how much voltage I could get with just like my skin and the ambient temperature of the room. Get some heat in there. Oh, let's go! Dude, 136 millivolts. So I just got 136 millivolts for my body heat, and then it regulates as this side cools down. These things are basically little sandwiches of semiconductors. As heat flows through them, it makes the electrons move and creates a current. So as long as there's a temperature difference on either side, it's making electricity. And my skin is always 98 degrees, baby. Unless I'm licking doorknobs, then it's 101. <laughs> this is similar to how solar panels work and that they essentially just get the electrons to move to generate electricity, but they use light or the sun. And we're not powering it with sun. We're powering it with human. First and most practically, I wanted to see if I could save it for later, like back up my body heat into electricity. I'm about to plug in right there with my with my body. Which feels weird. 5,000 watt hour? I could game in the wilderness for 24 straight hours. Next, what if I could be like wearing this all the time and never have my phone die? Can I, literally me, charge a phone? I'm the human battery. Finally, what if to like foreshadow the coming age of doom, I could power a robot directly from my body heat. So in order to become the world's first human battery and harvest my body heat, I just needed to find a way to get these stuck all over my body. I thought about just using rubber bands, but if you've ever been a 12 year old before, you know that that starts to turn your limbs purple. They fall off, your limbs fall off and it's bad. So I settled on this cause it's basically like a giant rubber band all over my skin. I really hope my wife doesn't walk in. It'd be a little hard to explain. To test it, I just poked a little hole in it and then slid a device in there and checked how much voltage it produced. Oh, that's satisfying to work. I'm just letting the pressure of the spandex and it's significantly less voltage because it's dissipating less heat. The problem with this setup is that the side that's supposed to be cold is being insulated by the spandex, not allowing the heat to dissipate. To solve this, I 3D printed these little brackets so that I could attach a heat sink. Yeah, big old blob of thermal paste. That'll work. Here we go. Oh, wow. This added over 100 millivolts from my first test. And this is still just where it's room temperature, not even cold. You see the bigger temperature difference the more power we get. If I'm wearing this, what parts of my arms and legs are the hottest? Olivia walked in. Why is this even happening right now? Would you hold the thermal camera? Like what are you this? wearing Just your boxers? I'm having another baby. Socks and boxers. Oh, wow. So what part of me is the hottest, baby? <laughs> I can't answer that. <laughs> it's like my, my, oh yeah. It's like my chest and shoulder area that has a lot of heat. The next challenge was getting the thermal device to actually stick to the fabric. You'd be able to cut a perfect hole there so that the metal part can be exposed and dissipate heat. But as soon as I do that, all of them will fall out. I ran a few tests and landed on this. If I cut two little slots, that holds it in place pretty good. If I remove these little plasticies and then just use thermally conductive glue, I don't have to 3D print anything. And then just by cutting a few little slots in the spandex, the stretchy pressure will keep it from falling off. One down. And then in theory, if I just put enough of them, I'm the human battery. 5,000 to go. While I was doing that, I was also installing this. Oh, yeah. A smart transfer switch designed to hook up to your house and back up the entire thing for days. Nice, bro, that looks sick. Meaning during a blackout, you could have multiple days of electricity from this gigantic battery. And I actually thoroughly tested it by using it throughout this entire video on my huge garage server setup. It's powering my computers, all of my cameras. I made sure it was running the whole thing. I was actually nerding out pretty hard. Thank you, Jackery, for sending over the Explorer Plus 5000. And they're actually giving away 50 of these. I'll have more info at the end of the video. With the modules prepared, I carefully planned out where I was gonna put them on the suit. I'm gonna make it look like I have abs made of thermoelectric generators. I think realistically my nipples will be a very hot source. Now, one of my biggest concerns was weight because I needed the spandex to be strong enough to still pull it and press it up against my skin. Let's see if it all falls apart. 
Oh, it's not falling apart yet. Okay. Whoa, that looks kind of cool. I put 10 more on the back and then it just came down to wiring. I have to remember that the black wire is the positive. It's backwards. Okay, I won't forget that. At room temperature, each module was producing about 200 millivolts and 60 milliamps? That's pretty sick. So if I wire them in parallel, the amperage will add together and the voltage will stay the same. With the 40 modules I'm using, that means on paper, we should have 200 millivolts and like 2.4 amps before we even go outside into the cold, which is kind of nuts. What if you just had like 10 of these? and a jacket, and you've got just like a pocket that's got a USB-C port. For comparison, that's like one-fifth the power that comes out of a really cheap phone charger, but like from a human body. On the human battery. Okay, I mean, it's holding together. And if I'm wearing this in the cold outside, we should double that. It's starting to look scarier. Like, I don't know how bad I want to put it on. But that's on paper and I've got to test it. Um, the only problem is that it's a bright, sunny day outside, but I basically live in a desert, which means I can just wait until 4 a.m. 4 a.m. It's like cold outside, it's supposed to get colder. So with my blood flowing, replenishing the heat to the surface of my skin, I became the human battery. I can feel the cold surfaces. In this moment, I was the world's first true human battery and I felt pretty dumb. But how much electricity was I actually making? How do I look? So inside the garage was pretty hot, so the voltage was still low. Hmm. But outside was balls cold. It's balls cold. So as soon as I walked outside, the voltage started to climb. Dude, that's insane. Let's see how high it goes. I need like 300. I have this little voltage converter that's designed to turn 300 millivolts into five volts at the cost of amperage. So as long as I can get it to 300 millivolts, I'll have usable electricity. Oh, dude, that's nuts. It goes up if I move around. So there's three things I knew to try to try and get the surface of my skin hotter. First was workout. Not on the treadmill because there's stuff on it. I can't use the treadmill. There's stuff on the treadmill. Bro's a battery. I'm the human battery. I'm the human battery. Okay, I'm sweating. That's good. And it was working. Voltage was climbing. Okay, I think if I drink some gin now and keep working out. Next was alcohol. I remember from Mythbusters that alcohol is actually bad in a survival situation because it lowers your core temperature by dissipating the heat at the surface of your skin. But it's exactly what I need. <laughs> I do not like that at 6 a.m. I'm also chugging coffee for the caffeine. Okay, the grass is 37 degrees. Someone's coming, someone's coming, someone's coming. I look right. I can't believe it. What am I doing with my life? All of that combined with the temperature drop outside. So we should reach peak coldness here in about 30 minutes. Was really promising. 250 pound lap pulled down. We're going higher. I'm the human battery. I'm the human battery. But it still wasn't going up quite like right. I expected. We're peaking at 150. And somehow the voltage was lower now than it was at room temperature early. I didn't want to have to do this. The final thing I could try. But I'm going to have to put arthritis cream under each one of these. Arthritis cream has capsaicin. Capsaicin. Which helps create blood flow like at the surface of your skin. I'm pretty sure it was expired. I put a little dab of it underneath each module to increase the temperature of my skin. And so with all this working out and all that gin. Drink the last of the alcohol with the arthritis cream on my hands. And the expired arthritis cream. This helps and I eat every little bit I can get. It was kind of working. Let's go baby. I have so much arthritis cream and so much gin inside of me, on me, and I am a human battery. Here we go. Yes baby. Okay, the arthritis cream and the gin made it go up. But my goal of this night, think battery thoughts. I'm the human battery. Powering a real robot directly from my body heat to foreshadow the downfall of humanity? Oh my goodness, people are driving by. Ah, was a failure. Human battery. Channel your inner energy. Ugh. I'm the human battery. I'm the human battery. It's not working. I'm not the human battery. And I found out later that my little voltage converter was just broken, wasn't working. Which I guess it technically could just be broken. And I'm the, the sentient AI battery. robots frowned battery. upon my failure. <sighs> After some research, I found the problem. Localized vasculo... I'm just gonna read you what it said. Localized vasoconstriction. Basically, the surface of my skin is getting cold. I feel cold right there. Slowing the transfer of heat, resulting in less electricity produced. But I still had a few more hours of cold in the morning before the temp started to climb, so I had a plan. The arthritis cream needed to be 
inside of me. But not actual arthritis cream, the capsaicin that they put in it comes from chili peppers. Oh so I goodness. ordered the spiciest Thai food I've ever That's eaten. That's the spiciest thing I've ever eaten. While working out in a jacket, while drinking soup and coffee, bro. Oh, I can't do it, I gotta do it. Leftover gin in my system, covered in arthritis cream. Oh. And it still didn't work. That was the worst sentence. That last sentence was terrible. I tried wiring them in series instead of parallel, which adds the voltage instead of the yeah. amperage. Almost 0.6 volts. I have to have done the wiring wrong or something. Dude. But it wasn't the wiring. See, the cold side isn't just staying perfectly at the outside temperature. It went down. How? It heats up and reaches what's called a steady state temperature, based on how fast the heat sink can dissipate my body heat. Meaning the initial peak generated current may be that thousand milliwatts, but over time it equalizes out to much less than that. Basically, my engineering was bunk and my hypothesis was chalked, but I didn't give up. No, 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 I didn't give up. I'm the human batter. I needed the generator devices to get really, really cold and then me get really, really hot. And then just make sure I flop down and I'm on all of them at the exact same time. And then I could create pulses of human battery electricity. So the following night, I woke up at 5 a.m. and gave it one more shot. All I should have to do is belly flop on that. And then finally, <laughs> After transferring so much of my heat into the atmosphere in order to generate electricity. Uh, is it moving? I tested everything for like an hour and then realized. So why is it going? The black wire is the positive wire. I won't forget that. I just had to switch them. I'm the human battery. I'm the human battery. I'm the human battery. That's me doing that. I'm powering this robot with my body heat. I'm the human battery. I was basically generating about one watt per pulse. Meaning if I, a human, were an actual battery, it would be this battery. This little bitty battery. <laughs> but nonetheless, I was the human battery. I'm the human battery. So in order to charge the Jackery device with my body heat to 100%, because it's so massive, I would have to do pulses for seven years. I would have to do this for seven years straight. But if I simulate it with a working step-up converter, then technically, I would be able to wear something like this to trickle charge a phone. So maybe it's not totally useless. And I guess you could say I'm glad it was so hard to turn myself into a battery so that the robots have a hard time with us and our localized vascular constrictions. I just hope that they don't improve this technology and then turn us all into like 500 watt heat generators. That would suck. That probably won't happen. <laughs> so amidst all the terrible weather and outages that are happening, Jackery has decided to power 50 homes for free with this newest state-of-the-art home backup power system. This will give 50 of you the chance to have this installed. They're including the cost of installation. It's extremely valuable. Like it's got super output, 7.2 kilowatts, 5,000 watt hour whole home backup. It doesn't make any noise, no emissions. It'll do 120 volts or 240 volts, depending on what you're running. Uninterruptible power supply with zero milliseconds seamless switching Bro, i'm gonna go play video games in the wilderness they're not selecting at random they're selecting based on people who need it and could actually use it and it's not going to be through the youtube comment section it's through the link in the description so if you're interested click that link thank you again to jackery for sponsoring this video and really making it possible we're watching, Nicholas. just passing through